Hey everybody, what's it, Fox Gaming here? So today I wanted to show you all my new Deflector Tank PvE build. I decided to put this build together just because I wanted to see how tanks fit into the current PvE meta, certainly for heroic content. I know they are used very little at the moment um, outside of the two raids, particularly the new raid, um, and I know they're quite effective at the final uh, DUA boss of the legendary stronghold version um, as it allows you to essentially kite him around the room and expose his backpack for your, your dps to shoot outside of those encounters i couldn't really think of anywhere in pve at least that tanks used at all when i first started playing the game sort of seriously which was tu8 back in march 2020 i think that launched I, my first kind of pve build just because everything was really hard back then or it was to me at least was a tp tank with uh, bulwark and liberty and that worked really well and True Patriot is still the best tank set in the game, in my opinion. I've decided to go for Foundry Bulwark today for a couple of reasons, and there is a bit of synergy with this set. Um, but you really wouldn't go far wrong running True Patriot, as it does offer a lot of damage buffs to your team. Um, and ultimately, a tank's job is to support your team by drawing a lot of aggro. But it isn't just limited to that. You really want to be offering buffs where possible, damage buffs, healing. Um, you know, There's quite a few ways that you can build a tank that can be more than just a big sort of bullet sponge for all of the ads to shoot into. So what I decided to do here was have a look at a combination of a few different talents, perks uh, or talent skills and, and gear set to um, sort of bring this build together. Foundry Bulwark is uh, quite central to this build. So two pieces gives us 10% total armor, which is fantastic. As you can see, our total armor there is 2 million in the bottom left, and that's quite important for this build. Three pieces gives us 1% armor regeneration since the rework, down from three. But it also gives us 50% shield health, which is an additive bonus. And again, that kind of plays into this build. And then the four piece gives us makeshift repairs. Whenever you or your shield take damage, 20% of that amount is repaired to both over 15 seconds. So this is kind of a selfish tank set. It's definitely designed to keep you alive um, more than something like True Patriot, which is designed to benefit your entire team. But that again, that is that is quite important for this build. I decided to run the backpack for this particular piece because I could have I could have run something like Overclock or Protector or even Opportunistic just as ways to buff my team. Um, but the backpack is basically going to give us the Process Refinery uh, talent, which increases makeshift repair speed from 15 seconds to 10 seconds. So we're basically going to be getting that 20% back every 10 seconds now, which is obviously 50% faster. So that's really nice. I wanted to run the Gilligar chest here, um, that is specifically the uh, Perfect Vanguard variant, the point, the appointment, because this gives us two two nice little uh, features. It's a two-part talent that really benefits this build. Deploying a shield makes it invulnerable for five seconds in PvE and grants 50% of your armor as bonus armor to all other allies for 20 seconds. And the cooldown is only 25 seconds. So there's only a five-second window every 25 seconds that this isn't available for your team. So that's where the 2 million armor comes into play. Of course, one piece gonna gives us 5% and one piece, excuse me, two piece foundry gives us 10%. So that's why I've been able to get up to 2 million, even though some of these pieces are pretty poorly rolled, as you can see here. Um, so what, what I essentially wanted to do here was I wanted to come away from the bulwark because every PVE tank that I've seen always uses the bulwark and with good reason, it's got 13 million HP, makes a lot of sense, and you can still use a decent sidearm with it. I really wanted to test out the deflector shield. I've used this in the past and I will be honest, it isn't an amazing skill. It's the only way to buff the damage on the deflector shield when it essentially deflects the bullets back to the enemy that's firing them uh, is via mods. It, is, it does not scale with armor, skill tier, skill damage, anything like that. The only way to buff it is via these mods just here, which in my opinion is ridiculous. They absolutely need to make a way for this to scale with I mean, I'd probably say just based off of your shield itself. So if it's skill tier six, then, um, you know, it should scale with that. Now, yes, the deflected damage does go up with that, admittedly, but th that's literally it, you know, and it's only 145k um, average damage. Depends on the weapon type. So that basically means, you know, if it's just like a traditional AR, then it's going to um, average about 145k every time it deflects back at them, which really isn't very much at all. However, the Bulwark Shield does zero damage to enemies, um, and we're still going to be using the same Liberty Sidearm. So, you know, in theory, this is going to do more damage. And in conjunction with the extra 50% shield health that we get from Foundry, and the fact that our shield is going to be invulnerable for, you know, five seconds every 25 seconds, I thought that the lower HP Deflector Shield at 8.5 million versus the 13 million Bulwark 
was actually quite viable. So that was kind of my, my sort of thinking there. The final piece that we've gone for is a Murakami name needs the Emperor's Guard, um, and that gives us an additional 1% armor regen to buff it up to 2, and of course that stacks with our makeshift repairs, um, but it also gives us 20% skill duration, which is really nice for my second skill choice here, the Tactician Drone. A lot of people are using Spotter at the moment in PvE and PvP. It's really, really good for skill builds and um, DPS builds. And I've seen tons of people running in sync and Spotter on 6 red even for the raid and PvE because it is very, very powerful at the moment. All this drone is going to be doing is one or two things. One, it's going to be helping those Spotter people to um, essentially take full advantage of that talent, which gives them 15% multiplicative damage for their skills and weapons. But two, it makes turning on the Fog of War directive even more um, viable. It's a simple directive to turn on. All it does is get rid of your radar, and it's just 25% extra XP. And I believe it actually increases the, the stat rolls of the random loot drops within that mission as well, because it classes as a difficulty increase. But it can be sometimes a bit of a nuisance not knowing where our final enemy is, or um, you know, particularly if you're running with some newer players who don't know all of the spawn doors, um, having no radar can be a bit detrimental. So having this drone allows me to pulse the entire room, um, and that's kind of the two benefits of that with um, you know running that directive and of course just benefiting the spotter users. Now of course this is a bit of a niche pick here. You could easily just run a fixer drone, repair trap. Um, Oh, there's, there's tons of options. A booster hive could be a really smart choice as well. Uh, a skill damage based uh, skill. It, it doesn't really make a difference and you could be flexible here. But I felt that this might be quite a nice part of the build. And of course the Murakami 20% skill duration does buff the duration of this in conjunction with the sharpshooter mods that you get with it. So this thing actually lasts for 480 odd seconds which is insane. Um, Weapons don't make a difference, we're not going to be using them because the deflector shield only allows you to use your sidearm, so we've decided to go for the Liberty. Since TU-10 this received a really nice buff, um, it now does, so Liberty or Death now gives us um, a, a stack that you can build up. So hits grant 2% weapon damage, stacks up to 30 times. A 60% weapon damage and a pistol that already hits for 329k on a 6 blue build. Yes, I've rolled the 15% pistol damage into the sharpshooter tree, but that's it. So this thing already hits pretty hard, and this is going to give it an additional 60% additive damage buff. Headshots consume all stacks, repairing your shield for 3% per stack. So at max stacks, that's 90% of my shield back. And again, this plays into why I've gone with the deflector shield, because ultimately it's giving me the same functionality as the bulwark shield, as NPCs in the game are very poor at targeting your head, apart from the NPC snipers. For the most part, they target your centre of mass, and of course, whether it's a bulwark shield or a, a smaller deflector shield, it's still your centre of mass. So I'm still going to be staying alive with the armour regen. But yeah, I just felt that this was sort of a really good way to play into the deflector. I wanted to kind of build around that, and by healing my um, deflector shield all the time via Liberty, by getting the extra damage from Liberty to actually close kills, getting the extra damage from the deflector shield, and then getting all of the shield health back from, um, you know the foundry bulwark set in conjunction with the armor regen and the shield immunity um yeah i just i just felt deflector shield might be a really good choice here so that's kind of my reasoning behind this build here yes tank builds are very very flexible and you really don't need to worry too much about how you build them if you choose to do so but i truly believe that you can run pretty much anything in heroic missions now i think that was an invite there yeah, I mean, obviously the fastest way is probably still going to be one Eclipse user, most likely with Riot, Foam and Burn, and then three just high sort of glass cannon DPS use, uh, weapon users. But if you want to run some skills, some status, some tank, um, anything like that, you can. But, you know, you don't have to run, like, meta, because heroic missions have received so many buffs. I don't know if you call it a buff uh, or a nerf, but, you know, they've received so many um, changes to make it easier for everybody. You really can get away with running whatever you want to be honest now if you look here can you see that it's kind of hard to see but the orange box um, on this guy here see that there that target in line that is where the deflection damage goes but let's see how much damage this can actually do and about 89 per shot Liberty is hitting um, I don't quite see that there let's just give everybody the vanguard buff again so now my shield is immune So this range of is hitting for about a million on a crit. Don't worry, you're all good. And you see my drones in the middle of room here, so just keeping everything pulsed. 500 per crit. 
just going to keep on going up. Now, if this guy shoots into me, he is going to really hurt himself there. Let's see what this does. The good news is that other things shoot me, it all gets deflected towards the enemy. So if this tank shoots me, he's essentially going to kill his mate here. There we go. No, I didn't, I didn't shoot that guy at all when uh, a bunch of damage numbers came up. Just because other enemies were shooting into the shield. So the, the targeting is very much like Diamondback. You get that orange line um, you know, that connects to the enemy. And then any damage your shield takes, um, it gets past, essentially deflected. Uh, I, I don't know how it works as a percentage. I know it says 149k is an average. So I don't know how the game calculates that. But ultimately, every enemy that shoots you does more damage to the enemy that you're targeting. Um, and of course, even when you've got your Vanguard immunity, that still works. Right, let's get this in the middle of the room. So we're doing 500 per Liberty shot with 30 stacks. And at the moment, my shield's... Oh yeah, and about 700 per crit. I mean, that, that's... I know it's not very high, obviously, if you've got a, a full sort of crit build with an M1A, you're going to be hitting 3 to 4 million per crit on a headshot. It's not bad, you know, I mean, for a 6 bleed build, there's definitely worse damage options. Just got to remember to keep an eye on your cooldowns. Now it looks like the damage isn't deflected, they're kind of at an angle to me. System disrupted. Oh, I've just lost my. Just got disrupted there. Come on, we're off. System restored. Let's see if this guy can kill himself. So it only deflects um, projectile based bullets, by the way. Burn and so on doesn't deflect. To press this guy, he's gonna. Come on, shoot me, buddy. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's not huge damage, but it's more damage than I do with the bulwark. And with this exact loadout, you don't need the bulwark 13 million HP. I, I really don't think that you do. So I think the defect shield is quite a nice option if you just want to play a tank build. So again, 500k per Liberty Shot, so at 30 stacks, as you can see on the side of the gun. And about 100k per tick. Oh, that was a lot of damage there. I think that passed on the sniper the sniper bullet from the dog. Let's see if we can get it to kill him. Ah. 720k just from the deflector shield. That's more than my fully stacked Liberty. Oh, without critting, of course. <laughs> so this dog is doing more damage than a non-crit Liberty bullet to itself. Obviously, the fire rate is a lot slower, but... Given that overshield. So you look at all of these guys' armour as well. Obviously you can see it on the bottom right there. But <clears throat> it is quite important to have a look at the um, the cooldown. So if you look underneath my 9 bullets and my Liberty and my HUD, you'll see that they're the, the 3 shield uh, cooldown symbol. Obviously it's important to look at that. When it's blue, it means your shield is immune. When it's white, it means it's in cooldown. So if I bring my shield in out of that window, I won't reapply their armour. At the moment that disappears... Pop it there, watch in the bottom right, and we'll get some bonus armor. In PvE at least, there doesn't appear to be a range cap with this, so um, if people are quite far quite far ahead, then it still works. So yeah, I've just got to sort of keep flicking my eyes to that, that cooldown, um, just to you know, make sure that I'm constantly giving that bonus armor. And of course you always want to be in the front lines where possible, you want the enemies to be focusing you. One, because they're not shooting your team two because um, well they're deflecting damage only if they're shooting you now if you use the drone as I'm using obviously you want to place it in the middle of every room where possible but if it follows you it still does a short range pulse anyway to bring it back to you just double tap the button that it's assigned to um, and it will just follow you around and do that short range pulse it's definitely less than 60 meters more like 10 to 15 meters from what I've tested but ultimately it will still pulse the enemies So I'm, what I'm thinking here is, is this slower than um, running a DPS build? And you know what? It probably is slower, but it's a hell of a lot safer. I mean, if you look at my health, it's, it's just not going down at all. Um, and, you know, if you are running with uh, a, a, maybe a lesser experienced team, then I think this is a really strong build, personally. Just because you're going to keep them alive all the time if they're a bit unfamiliar with the mission. So, yes, I, I'm going to say tank builds are viable in heroic content. Because, do you know what? A lot of builds are viable in heroic content. Ooh. Look at that armour regen, though. Right, there's Vanguard Repox.
Just trying to draw some aggro now, so we get a little bit closer here. And you know what? My shield hasn't gone down once yet. And this isn't this isn't a bulwark shield, so you don't have to use a bulwark. Well, six hours later, and I finally killed that tank. Okay, that's probably a good time to call the video quits there. I think that's probably, you know, about as much as I can sort of demonstrate with the build. But try it out. See what you think. I mean, there's a lot of flexibility here. You could take off the backpack and run overclock or, um, uh, overclock or something else or opportunistic and just run a different type of shield. But honestly, try the deflector shield with foundry, vanguard and liberty. It doesn't have to be perfect vanguard. It can just be the standard vanguard. You know, it's just a... There's not a huge difference. It's, I think, 45% or something. It, it, it's basically the same, but it is nice that Perfect Vanguard is a killer for the extra, the extra armor. And, of course, it is percentage based off of your armor, so that probably is the best choice. But, yeah, try this exact combination. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'm also curious to know if anybody else runs a build similar to this, if they just think True Patriot is better. Do you run a Hazard Immune build? Do you go full armor regen without using Foundry? Let me know in the comments how you play your tank builds and you know do you think it is worth running a tank build if you're playing as a shepherd agent and helping newer players out or do you think it's actually better just to go full dps and murder everything faster um you know which ultimately might make the mission safer anyway because of course everything's dead i'm really curious to hear your thoughts um thank you very much if you did watch through to the end of the video and thank you again for the continued support of the channel and i will see you all in the next one peace